looks pretty intricate actually um, and we'll start from there so enjoy the uh, the work pay attention and see what his artistic abilities is this is where you have to kind of decide what you want to do with your career because there's a major difference he's using a Joey D um, looks like an heiress frame I'm not quite sure but it's a uh, hand sculpted by Joey D and part of his hand sculpted series How's his hand though? How's it feel? That's fine, dude. Good deal. Now you see, you see how clear his lines are and how definite and how consistent they are. He's got proper depth. He's got the fulcrum point, which is his proper stretch that he's obtaining, and uh, he's using his machine hand to guide that and use that as a depth control and, and uh, needle precision on that. with experience you guys all get there don't give up uh, you just have to do it right in the right way I don't know if being in a shop is the right way or not or being in the streets I know a lot of guys in the streets that are uh, really good Chino give you a shout out on that down in LA and Mr. Cartoon you guys are doing good you started in the streets so it doesn't you may you may think simple roads it's not. Very, very intricate. Are you guys dropping color today or just gray wash? Yeah. Oh, color. This is going to be a beauty. That's very intricate. So we won't get into uh, pigments or inks used by the artist. Uh, that's his personal preference. But you guys know I've got the Joey D's as well and I've reversed engineered on that and showed you guys some things. Uh, major breakthrough today. Wade had passed me along to a machinist out here in the Reno area and we've got some video on that mind-boggling mind-boggling so everything that I'm gonna be coming up with is coming into a reality and hopefully will be set by June so how long you been in tattooing man um, I kind of saw last year and I started tattooing in prison Reno's all got there Now, did you do any tats before the pen, or no. so you started behind the wall? I painted. He's probably the artist, yeah. I painted before, and uh, like graffiti on the street, or no, like canvas. Oh, nice oils, pastels, and cool, dude. Um, so now, when you were behind the wall and you did your first piece, it was obviously a put together rotary and. Uh, I'm assuming that your pigment was carbon and some baby oil, something like that? Yeah, it was soot, you know, some like ashes, uh -huh. fire ashes, stuff like that. They actually turned out real well, the consistency of that. Now, um, when you put up your first piece, that you started getting more business, obviously, off of that? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was doing fires a lot, so I wasn't at the, at the place a lot, so when we were home, we were a little bit, we would... Uh huh. So they, uh, they just want to get tacked down yeah, and get it done. Really really now, did you uh, did you learn anything about Marissa or staff while you were in? Uh, no. Nothing well, was. I mean, we, I've been, before I went to prison, I've been getting tattoos since I was a little kid. So, I mean, oh, so you're, you already you knew. You gotta go hustle. Talk to the porters, see if they'll hook you up with some gloves. And you know how the cops are with the damn cleaning some equipment. Some of them are cool. Some of them are cool. Was this Nevada or California? Nevada. Okay. So now, when when you came out and you're like, okay, I want to do this, man. Uh, you started hitting up shops. Tell me a little bit about that. Were they asking if you were a scratcher? They just want to see your art, or how did that begin? Um, I 
hit up a lot at shops and I have homies that own shops in town. But a lot of them are like full, you know, they don't have a lot of room right now. So, it's always the case, ain't it? I, yeah, it kind of just came to ways. You know, for the viewers that don't know, he's, he's, since I've known him and I don't know him very well, he's a very warm-hearted person, and uh, he he gives chances. A lot of shops won't do that. He, if they found out that you uh, scratched on the streets or anything like that, they'll turn you down with a heartbeat. But he's he's a different breed of his own. He's a businessman, and he sees through. He see, he th doesn't he see through the problems and he kind of wants to help. He's got kids and everything, so he's. Well, he was he was down for ten years himself, so he knows it's like to come out and want to do it. And no one wants to give you come out and want to do it. Come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and come out and want to do it. Shop, and Now, when you uh, came in, you had to apprentice under a, a mentor? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, his client is a, uh, a, a, a ranger, so he knows what pain's all about. I come from that background as well. So, uh, us military cats, I was telling a lot of the shop guys, I got tattooed on Iraq by some Iraqis. So, I've got some messed up work on me. I never trusted those guys. Yeah, I got a little too drunk that night. That's how you get Mercer. Right there. Man, that's how you get blown up. But uh, yeah, we make some some mistakes. But you know what? I can take it to heart that I got something to talk about. Yeah. Um, as far as what he's doing right now, he's doing line work. Are you building up your lines, or are you just sinking them? Just sinking them mostly. And look at those lines, and look how consistent they are. See, and a lot of you guys are having problems with your line work. You know, you have to you have to get a system down. You got to use your stretching and your your pivot points. You know, he's appropriate stretch and he's got his, uh, his, the palm of his machine hand controlling that depth. So that would be a difference between someone that doesn't know in the streets as far as what you learn in an apprenticeship. Stretching is so important. Listen to what he has to say because you want blowouts, you want, uh, you gotta know also body placement and what part of the body you're tattooing for that stretch. Some parts are light, some parts aren't. If you stretch too much, you're slicing the skin. Not enough, you're digging holes and uh, blowing out. So, how do you feel about hand tats or knuckles? It's hard, man, you gotta, you're just barely in. You know, you just wanna like, you know, you fucking You guys gotta listen to what he's saying and uh, give them props for that because guess what a lot of artists are not going to tell you the way that they do things because they don't they don't want to do that how do you feel about chinese main machines opposed to american um i haven't used a lot of chinese machines just mass produced and thrown out to make money yeah they don't care about the artists see and a lot of these chinese manufacturers have, have never they don't even know the tattoo process they don't know the history they don't know they're just making money and they're being greedy about it and they're stealing our concepts and that's one of the things you guys know i'm going to be making machines pretty soon and uh do you think uh that's something that i have to worry about yeah you kind of if your design gets out i'm gonna try and copy it and it's gonna be over with that machine because nobody's gonna trust it after that and I, I brushed up on that and talked about that and how difficult it's going to be to keep on the ball. In this business, it doesn't matter if you're an artist or a machine builder. You have to stay on the ball. It changes all the time. Um, you know, we're talking from ink all the way down to a grommet that you use. Or, you know, and, and then he's doing what I do. And You have little tricks that you come up with as an artist. Have you learned a lot of your own tricks opposed to a friendship? Yeah, you, well, I mean, a friendship really... So basically, experience is really going to get you or break you. Yeah, because you're going to get, you, know, you get your experience and then you start doing it the way that works for you. you know? 
How long would you say that it took to adjust from behind the wall, opposed to grabbing a, a machine? Well, the good thing was I didn't do too much with, you know, prison stuff. Like, I didn't have, you know, years, like, you know, the homies in the back who were down for 10 years. So you didn't have to be broken with that yeah, knowledge. I didn't have to, to break old habits and some of that kind of shit, you know? So, right. So I pretty much just kind of got the hang of the basic. The Chinese machines, most of them have uh, MIG welding wire, so it's copper plated wire. And what that does is, it, and plastic cores, it doesn't produce the magnetic field that it takes to stay consistent in the skin. Now, with that said, and the magnetic frequency and the vibration through the frame into the needle into the skin, do you think that has an impact? Yeah, definitely. Your, your work's not as consistent. Like, good stuff. People go out and buy, you know, the, the less expensive stuff just to get started. And really, you just drop the money and get, you know, a good machine and, and get what you need right off the bat because your work's going to be better. Exactly. Sure. You're you're brushing up on something that's huge in this, in this volume. Yeah, you're spending the money. You might as well just get the shit that's going to last you for a while and buy it once. And that's important. Say that again for these guys. You might as well just buy the shit that's going to last you and just get it one time, you know, and then you're going to not have to worry about it, and then you're going to learn with some good shit, and then you're going to learn with some good shit. You're going to learn with good shit. You cannot learn with Chinese crap. And then when you eventually, if you're learning with crappy shit, you'll get some good shit, and then you're going to have to readjust. See, and what he's saying right here, guys, is that if you cheap out in this industry, you're never going to ever exemplify your full potential in the skin. And you get a, and I know a lot of you guys are doing this right now. This is what we want to change. We can't stop the movement in the streets as far as scratchers are concerned. There's millions upon millions worldwide, globally. We cannot stop that. But here's the deal. You scratch someone up, you scar them up, you spread a disease, you're not educated, and what happens? The client comes back, you're in trouble. Not only are you in trouble, you feel like a dumbass because you just screwed someone's body up for the rest of their life until a shop guy takes control or a street guy that's been in the business for a minute. And this is the huge, okay, is what he just said, all right? And that's coming from a guy with a lot of experience with clients out of a shop, Everything that, you know, a lot of you guys are trying to aim towards. I've, I've seen a lot of you guys not want to get into a shop because of political aspects. And uh, the way that maybe an artist works money. Money is a huge factor. Got to find the right shop. Got to find the right shop. The client just said, you got to find the right shop. And what this client's going to do is he's going to assess the work from And uh, he's going to be like, yeah, this shit's dope. And I'm going to come back to him. And that's how it is. And that's how it is out here. And that's what the difference is. Hello? So how do you feel right now? When you're not on. Doing fine. <clears throat> it's looking really good, dude. Yeah. Really consistent. Okay. Uh, is this a traditional rose? Like uh, regular colors you want in there? Some highlights? It's gonna be like red with uh, blue with uh, green leaves, and there's gonna be like water droplets on the petals. Oh, nice. Okay. That's the most. That's the hardest part. Of it. So pretty much trying to grasp the hold of uh, realism. Yeah. You want a real, the real, yeah. most realistic. I mean, I, I have tried traditional tattoos. Yeah, let me see that one. That's really nice traditional. This is actually my first one. I got this about seven years ago. Beautiful work. still, like, the red hasn't really faded at no, all. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's like uh, Don Ed Hardy stuff right yeah, there. Yeah, that's, it's the Sailor Jerry. Uh, Sailor Jerry, yeah. you know what's up. <laughs> cool. Client knows, and that's another thing. Does your client know the history of tattooing? Uh, you know, does he not? Usually the, the clients that don't know anything about the history of tattooing are the most anal about the work being done because they're not full of knowledge. The client now just said, Sailor Jerry, I know from what he just said, he knows the history of tattooing. And you guys need to brush up on Sailor Jerry, 1891, O'Reilly, everything that I'm covering in the set. And, uh, you know, when I was my apprentice, and when I was in my apprenticeship, I was told that I'd never be an artist until I made my own needles. And I said, you know what, I disagree because I can buy my needles in bulk. You know, what, what's the point? And he sat down and showed me what the point was. And that, the point there was because 
eventually when I get good enough, I will design my own pieces of work and know what needle grouping is going to work for me and sometimes they're not readily available. But that's not necessarily true. It's kind of like being a sniper, you have to make your own bullets if you really want to be a... And say that again. Any, any craft, you're really going to have to design your own stuff, your own equipment. Well, like with sniping, like as a sniper, if you want to be accurate, you got to make your own bullets. That's right. Your own rounds because you know what it's going to do. You know, you know, you know the velocity. You know the, you know, the well, whole shelling, the, the case. They're just like machine made. Like you don't know what the hell you're shooting. Like, and this client is bringing up a extremely important topic, and it has nothing to do with tattooing. Well, it kind of does. You tattoo someone's face. Yeah. Or head, <laughs> but kind of relates. Uh, with it does relate. Things. And now what he's saying is, you have to have the right tool for the job that you want done, and that's in anything—a contractor, painter. There's a difference between an expert and an amateur. There you go. You heard it here, guys. And that's a client in the seat that that knows his shit. Okay. The artist is kicking out work. The client knows exactly some history based upon it, and then in reference to tools of the trade. Sniper. I've sniped, and you guys know that. You've seen pictures and things of that nature, so I know where he's coming from. A person that is out hunting, it's a little different. You know, mainly a deer is going to sit still, and you just you take your shot. With yeah. moving targets, you've got a lot to play with in windage and elevation. So, yep, because they don't make them on that level. And what he was talking about was mass-produced rounds. A mass-produced round is not going to be anything close to a custom round. Trust me on that. This is an error percentage. And you can't, and tell me, tell them that you, where are we going to get at? We don't have time for errors, do we? No, I don't know. You don't have time. And in this business, the no. tattoo world, you don't have time for errors. Yeah. You mess up a tattoo, that's somebody's freaking... Your name's shot. to live with that. Do you have your up and down days? Do you have a day where... Uh, these guys know that I'm I'm big in machines and I build and I tune and I'm tuned for a lot of uh, high prolific artists down in the LA County in San Jose and um, do you, what would you do if your machine took a crap? Would you just grab a standby? You have a standby or yeah, pro mostly because I don't know much about that. You know, like I know basic tuning things, but I'm not like a professional at it. Somebody can pick it up and know exactly what's wrong. You know, but I have. Right, and you get that feeling. Are you still in the search for a good machine? Um, not really. I mean, I use, I use that rotary for shading. Those are pretty consistent. It gets out the peppered shading that you like, the gradients. Yeah, it's strong. You know? I like this liner. I've been using this liner for about six months now after I had Joey's in it. And, uh, you sent it back? So, Joey D, he uh, he's good with that. You know, you you get some equipment off him. He's really good with. Hey, you know what? If it's not your way, send it back to me. I'll send it right back to you with a quick turnaround. He's pretty good with that. Um, <clears throat> when it came back, well, well, what was the problem? Was it just in too many hands? It was just new. It was yeah. Just new, brand new. So I sent it into him and just told him how I wanted it. You know, and he sent it back the way that he thought I would like it. And he hit it. You hit it, yeah, because I mean, it's not always like that. You might have to send it back again. Yeah, after time, you're going to build a, an armage bar. You, you build a memory, and sometimes the memory bank isn't correct. The little holes that you get from the wear and tear from the front coil and uh, to the arm bar. And uh, a lot of the guys, you know, they'll, when it gets to that point, some guys like it when it's in that memory zone. That means they have a perfectly tuned machine and it stays there. But some guys, it's off even by micro millimeters and it's not running the way that it should. And now it's got that hole in the arm bar and now it's just, it's just stuck in that hole on tune. And there's a difference between a tuned machine and a finely adjusted tuned machine. And that's when it gets into the geometrics the, the and the uh, sciences of this. There's a huge, I, I would like to see artists learn the schematics of the machine in their apprenticeship. That would be a good thing to base upon. And a lot of guys, they don't get that, that opportunity or that chance. Especially being an apprentice, it's very difficult anyways, because a lot of the time you're just watching. And it's hard to watch someone and learn. And, yeah. you know. Um, well, here, that's a good thing about like, apprenticeships here. We try to, to uh, let them get on a machine and do little things, you know what I mean? Like, 
six months into it as opposed to some shops won't even let you touch the machine for years. Years, you know? right? And that was me. How do you learn something without doing it? You know, you can only watch so much. Right on, brother. That was me right there. Um, I wasn't allowed to touch a machine, and I almost gave up because I, I don't believe it should be that way. Now, I don't believe that you should pick a machine up and not know and scar people up, but there's a lot of shop guys there that could be like, hey, here's my leg, or let me watch you do your leg, or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's some people that will come in that really don't care and let you just doodle on them. Uh-huh. But the first tattoos I did was on myself. How was that? Uh, they turned out all right. Was that a, a pro machine, quote unquote? Uh, they were just my first machines when I got out of prison. China? Yeah, just knockoffs. Okay. A lot of these guys that are watching are investing into these 30 to $60 machines. Okay. And most of them are copper plated wire. Okay. Now, going from that to, let's say, this Joey D, what percentage would you say has an impact on the skin in your work? Or not even percentage, just you. Uh, what's the difference there between a Chinese machine that you used on your legs? It's more consistent, you know what I mean? You can tell that it runs smoother, stronger, you know, and even even duration. Like some of those machines will get like hot. Real hot in the coil zone. Yeah, you can tell you like what the fuck is going on. Mm -hmm. And that will slow the operation of it down right there. Yeah, you just, you want to, it's like a science, you know, you find a power supply and a pedal and a, and a clip cord that works good for you and then you kind of just stick to it. I went through like a lot of different uh, combinations to like get one that actually has been consistent, you know. It's like a hit or miss kind of thing, really. It takes years to figure it out and I still, to this day, like sometimes just switch something out, you know. You hear what he's saying? It's, it's, it's going to take years to find... I, the tool that you can use on a consistent level and trust it. It's all about trust with this. Just like anything, just like the client right now. He has trust. And in life, our relationships are that way. The military is like that. Everything's based upon trust. And these are good key points here. Can you trust what's going on? You know, I don't have many friends in this life because I have trust issues. Uh, because I've been screwed over so many times. Could you agree? Oh, yeah. You know? I only get screwed over so many times before he's just like your heart turns, dude. Um, what's your uh, what's your canvas of choice? What are you hitting? What's your forte? I just get, I just get acrylic basic canvases. I don't, I'm not too big on that kind of shit. What kind of uh, you just take the the traditional stuff, or you branch off into the dark zones? I usually just do black and white kind of shit. Really, I like that though. It's all just basic. Out. I do like a lot of cities and shit. Yeah, I don't know how to describe it either, but it's not like, really abstract. But the, but the it's black not. and white allows it to like give it some like dimension, that, like dimension, yeah. that, like kind of pops and out. It's pretty point. basic, most yeah. of it, but it's just more like it's, it's pretty. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't like it a lot. Show you the soul off of my paintings yeah. again. Nice. Well, you know what's up. What you're getting at is uh, you're getting at the orientation of a tattoo on the skin. Some people may come in here and they may say, "Hey, I want a barcode." Well. How big is the barcode, dude? It's got to be like maybe six inches not to bleed in after it heals. A lot of people don't understand that. Now, yeah. do, do you ever decline any client from... Uh... Sometimes, yeah, they got to, like, a lot of people want little, little portraits. Like, man, you can't do a little portrait. You, know? you, need, you need a good size on that shit, really. But and why is that? Because of what you just said. It was, you know, bleeds? bleeds into it. It turns into a big old... Dot. Dot. Big old dot. Yeah. See, a good tattoo, there's a couple of components that you need in a good cat tattoo. One of them is line weight. A lot of the, a lot of people don't understand line weight, and, and they'll just do a bold outline with no distinct uh, variances. No skinny, no fat, you know, that's line weight. Or you have, the, you know, a good tattoo, you can stand back 10 feet and still tell what it is. If it looks like a dot, because the artist didn't know what he was doing, and he didn't take the you know the time for orientation or body flow even with that and placement I saw this artist here he looked at the um, the initial placement and he didn't like it the client like it was okay with it but what did he do as a good artist he said you know what no we got it we, we're gonna place this a little bit different because it's a little crooked that's someone that's taking their time pride and passion 
It's fine if you get something and then you go home and you're, everyone's like, oh, your shit's crooked. Then it's like... Would you agree with me that there are artists out there that just want to flip it like waiters oh, and yeah. get the money? Yeah. Sure. And they don't care? Especially in Reno, there's so many artists. Like, you got to be careful who you go to. Exactly, right? And some guys just don't care. You want it? Okay, I'll give it to you, dude. Just, Especially you know. Especially guys that are getting their first tattoos. They don't know anybody and they just like... Now, as a client, do you think it's up to the artist to teach that? And say, look, now nah, that's probably not good for you right now because this is why. Now let's brush up on the uh, scratcher situation. How how do you feel about scratchers in the streets? Um, I don't know. Like I said, man, it's not really for anyone to, to decide. You know who can do what and shit. But I mean, I feel like people shouldn't. They should get some kind of training. You know what I mean? At least the spread of communicable diseases. At least that. Yeah, they need to know their, their health stuff. The health stuff is major, and, and you know, spreading diseases is not cool. And in the shop, that's the biggest thing that they 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 push through their apprenticeship is the 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 how to not cross contaminate. I don't know how many times I was smoked for touching my towels with my gloves, but now that was way back. I was dealing with an old school guy. And he tripped on me about everything. So now we're we're he's using a uh, a rotary dragonfly. He's using that for his shading. And he's getting his variances actually packed in there. I think a lot of artists they won't they won't even go deep enough too, so it fades really fast. They're scared. Like that, that, that Sailor Jerry tattoo I got like seven years ago. I hasn't hardly faded at all. No, it's all. beautiful, man. Yeah, you could tell, uh, yeah, it's beautiful. The pit, the right ink was used, so the right... Did, some some people's stuff fall out half a year later. Yeah, and that just means that the artist didn't do their job. Or they didn't know how, you know, and yeah. or they didn't do the research or they're not using the right equipment. Um, all the way down to the needle is important in his business. Uh, problem within the streets is... The right type of ink too. Definitely. That red, like absolutely. Not a lot of people have that red that'll that won't fall out or turn pink or. Well, a lot of the times the the artist is making his own. You'll yeah. you'll see that, and uh, you know, they have these manufacturers out there, and they're on TV. They're using them, or you think they are, but yeah. behind the scenes they're not. Yeah. That's just a gimmick and a, tr a sales trade, to where they have their own secret inks that they're using and they're they're just all they're doing is endorsing a product line they're not even using this stuff and I think that's really messed up because what do you see you see them using this ink and then uh, guys are trying it like for instance scream ink scream ink is the worst besides the Chinese stuff imported to use on someone's skin none of this is FDA approved so we don't know what we're putting in the skin a good ink number one will stick and stay and it's used by various artists around the world but then you got to look at are the contents ready to live uh, are they ready to read on the bottle itself because even an ink is duplicated in china and you don't know what they're putting it could say it could say uh you know mom's on it by millennium so but nowadays you get stuff from china sketching they don't care what's going into our skin like who knows? The vibrance. How long ago was that? Like five years old, man. We're talking five years, guys. And let me tell you something. The ink is in there, and it's vibrant as hell. You know? And it's dry up here in Reno, you know? Yeah. Imagine if we were moist down in, like, you know, Georgia or down in uh, Santa Cruz. How vibrant these colors would be and moisturized. So there's a lot of variances to this art, and if you want to stick with it, you've got to do what this artist is saying and what this client is saying. It's surprising to me that the client has some knowledge and he's done his investigation and homework. That's a good thing. Most people, they just want to go get a tattoo. And uh, nowadays, I always say, you want to be different, don't go get a tattoo. That's, you know. It takes me like a year to decide if I'm going to get a tattoo. See? Yeah, and I'm not like that. I wish I could be like that. I just said, ink me yeah, up. I'm like, I'm like, all my tattoos are like at least a year apart because I like I have to think about what I want. I mean, man, I say, you know what? But then when I see I what want I want, it. I want it. Yeah.
you know, I've, I've dug into myself, I've gone too deep, too light, I've tried, you know, even after the apprenticeship, and uh, because my mentor was just really old, but really good, but at the same time, I wasn't learning what I wanted to learn, he wouldn't let me touch a machine, and that really screwed me up and hindered the process, I almost quit, and that's, that's mainly why this documentary is being put together, is so that you young artists out there don't give up, don't give up because someone calls you a scratcher, just do it right. Have respect for the trade, and that's what we've been covering. It's about respect. It's about your clientele and uh, really being having a passion. Don't do this because you want to make money. You want to be rich. Are you going to be rich off this? Okay, so you heard it. You know. There it is. It's the passion of the job. You, as an artist, you love to draw, you love to do art, you love to produce stuff. Do you stand back and say, man, that's, you know, I, I did that, I'm passionate about it, and my client's gonna go home happy today. Do you, does it feel good? Yeah, like I, uh, I love being here, man. I mean, it's not as easy as everyone makes it seem, you know, I fucking work 80 hours a week and shit. But it's not like, you know, it's not like a job job, you know? You're and doing something you want to do all day. Is, is this business right for you? Are you in it for just the money? Are you in it for the passion? Do you just want to be cool? If you're you, not passionate, you won't last, man. You won't make it. If you're not passionate yeah, about right. this business, you're not going to make it. This is all I do now. His life surround is surrounded by art all day, every day. When he's not busy, I've been in here. You know what he's doing? Drawing. He's drawing, drawing, drawing. Listen to what I'm saying. He's drawing and he's amplifying his artistic abilities and he's getting better and better and better. If you guys don't do this consistently, you're going to fall off and you're going to give up on yourself. That is huge. Every single time you can tell a good artist in the shop, what's he doing? He's not bullshitting. He's amplifying. He's messing with his machines. He's creating a... Uh, palette, he's uh, drawing, he's it's all about his passion and drive. That's how you can tell if someone really doesn't care or do they. That's who's gonna make it. Are they passionate or not? Have you met any artists uh, at other shops or anything like that? You, you just were like, shit, dude, I cannot work here, bro. The attitudes are fucked, everybody's competing, you know, nobody's showing. Uh -huh. But I've been to other shops and I was getting tattoos to where I'm just like, what the fuck? You know, they get that, that whole rock star attitude and shit. And like their shit doesn't stink and bam, they got this down and they're the best. Like, and you know, that's why some dudes be coming off the street trying to get jobs there and shit. They get that bad taste in their mouth, you know? We can all be better every day in this business. It's, yeah, I'm going to be learning for the rest of my life. Once you feel like you're good, is when you're you, fucked. You stop learning. Because then you're going to plateau. With anything in life, you just stop learning. If you just if you think you're the best, you're not going to improve. You'll, and you'll plateau. That's where yeah. you'll stop being good. So you won't you elevate after that. The minute that you think you're the shit and that your shit doesn't stink is the minute that's as far as you're ever going to go. You're never going to elevate, and we've talked about this. You're here at a level, and unless you keep an open mind about it and a good attitude, and you think, once you, what he's saying is, once you think you've got it, you're done. You're absolutely finished. If you don't think you can learn anymore, and that's why a lot of these shop guys, they're not going to take on an apprentice from the street, because guess what? It's his time. It's his tricks, his techniques that he's showing. It's his time. It's his time around the clients. A lot of shop guys, they, you know, as an artist myself, I want to work alone. A lot of the artists, including myself, don't want people around me. I just want to do it and focus. This is what we're talking about between the differences. The shop mentality versus the other shop mentality versus the scratcher versus the other scratcher. And we've covered this. And now you guys are seeing firsthand what I mean by when I say these things. Now, I noticed that you're using a rotary for all your your uh, your packing and your shading. How come not a coil machine? Um, I don't know, man. I just kind of landed on rotaries and stuck with them. I don't, coils seem like a lot more work to me. 
You know, like it's a lot more. You're doing a lot more to get the same result. You know, a lot of dudes like that. But most of them are old school guys who've never tried rotary because they're new. You know, they're kind of scared of it. They don't want to change anything they're doing. Yeah, which is not, you know, it's not not understandable. It's definitely not advisable in this business. They got something that works for them, so why fuck with it? Mm Mm-hmm. But But are you different in that? Well, to me, I'm pretty new, you know, so I'm like, I didn't, I wasn't set in my ways with anything. You know, like, I didn't have, like, a good system down, and, like, when I first started learning, I was ready for suggestions still, you know? And try some new shit. So you're just soaking it all up and yeah. and adding that up just to be the best artist you could be. Yeah, just seeing what I could, uh, what was the best formula for me. You know? Hey, I've got information. Um, everybody is an artist that can contribute to the table here. I'm gonna expand my my mind and my artistic ability. So, do you think that you'll continue using the rotary opposed to a coil, or what if someone like me comes along and creates a <laughs> the best freaking shader packer in the world. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> we'll try a tattoo on you with it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. See how it comes out. And a couple of the other shops in town, I won't mention those names, or maybe I will later, uh, depending on how far they want to take it with me. Um, They weren't too... They weren't too into it, and they had those shop attitudes, and basically, you know, what I said is, hey... You're, just remember where you came from, you know? You, you all, everybody starts somewhere. What if the guy, you know, was locked up for so long, he came out, he was 48 years old, and he wanted to pick it up and get into a shop? Is there, is there anything wrong with that? You know? And they would. And the other thing is, is, okay, you're played, bro. Your life's over, dude. And what happens? There's some people out there that commit suicide if they if they don't get you know their dreams down you know. Uh, you know, you deserve a chance, you know. There you go. The best words of the day right there. Everybody deserves a chance, and that's what we're doing. Basically, what and what what we're all saying here is get the proper education. Because I don't I don't agree with you have to be in a shop to be a good tattoo artist. I don't I believe a lot that. Of guys who are in shops that are really as long as you're sterile. Yeah, you That's all I gotta say. You got the, the medical things yeah. you need to know and like that. If you can learn to sink in, can you produce quality work and you're not hurting people and you're not scr- you know scarring people up and you're not spreading disease? There are a ton of people in the streets that do a bit. Now here's the problem though. Do you have a, a feeling about People in the streets taking business from shops? No, it's America, man. <laughs> get what you get and take, give nothing back. Fuck it, you know? But I think it, most people that want quality work go to shops anyway. Yeah, they're sketched out on the whole street thing. You know? uh, and that's because of disease. Or well, you jacked up tattoos. Up, you know? Right, and and it's going to take a lot longer from someone from the streets to build up that name in the streets. Yeah. But once you do that, guess what? That guy has a lot of business believe it or not yeah. because on both sides of this dvd i'm touching scratchers that are in this game hard they could be in magazines left and right they don't want to but more humble uh, so my yeah. point is is generation by generation we're changing and evolving yeah one of the one of the best artists in town was scratching out of his house until recently now he's in a shop and he won all the conventions you see what I'm saying? Best and tattoos, best tattoos, won all of them, dude. Wow, and he was self-taught? So, well, he was, uh, he was somebody around here's apprentice at one time, and then when he graduated, he went to his house and just started working for himself. So, you know, I don't really know that much about why, but... And then from that point, he bam, he just blew up, and then... Yeah, he's, I want to say, he hasn't blown up yet because of... He was at his house, you know, and like he didn't really get to expand his clientele and shit like he wanted to, but he will now, you know, but he still got those awards, you know, his best tattoo, best overall tattoo, all that shit, you know. So. See, and we branch a lot on this, um, is the fact that, hey, there are people out there that are, you know, maybe they're afraid to go ask I've had a lot of guys contact me and say, you know what, I'm afraid to go into a shop and ask because 
you know, my art on paper is awesome, but I don't know if I can do this in the skin thing. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of people, too, can't bridge the gap. You know, I meet a lot of guys who draw hella good, and you see their drawings, and then they go to do the tattoo, and it's not the same, you know? It's Total like, different. Total yeah. different. There's guys that I've met that think that because they're beautiful on paper, they're going to be beautiful on skin, and that's just not the case. No, because it's a, it's a machine. You're learning how to run the machine. You know, you're not learning how to draw. You already know that. The machine's not going to give you a chance. you got to learn how to run it and how to do the moves with it. It's just like anything else. Well, it's not a canvas either. Yeah, it's not. It's a lot of different the material. Human, human <laughs> skin is a lot different, too. Everybody's shit is different. Exactly, and that's and, why I don't condone, you know, I don't I don't tell people, hey, go practice on some fruits or some, you know, fake skin. I mean, it might work for someone. It never did for me because it wasn't the real skin. skin. It didn't, it didn't get I, red. When I first started, I was, like, practicing line work on, like, watermelons and shit just because it was thicker and just to get, you know, like, my, my hand steadiness down. And the weight of the machine get yeah, used to not, all that. not for, like, anything to be, like, jump right into anything. Yeah. Now, how did that help you? Did it help? I think it did, you know. So, oh, the watermelon with the, yeah, because it's got, it's very uh, opposed to an orange. Yeah, I mean, you're not so worried about, like, how your shit's coming out on it. You're just trying to Technique. get the machine in your hand and, and do something with it, you know? Do you like a longer throw or a shorter throw machine? Um, or does it vary? It just varies, man. Like, mm -hmm. like the rotary is kind of set up the way it is, so, you know what I mean? Like, you're kind of, it's kind of stuck on the way it is, and I'm pretty sure these are short throws. And if you guys don't know, based on what it looks like, this is a dragonfly. These are expensive machines, um, and it's authentic. There's, you know, Chinese have taken everything under the belt, and that's what I'm afraid of with my company. Is uh, a week I come out with it, a week later it's produced. It just puts me in a bind, so I have to come up with some sort of schematic, uh, some sort of secret, you know, if it's authentic or not. But it doesn't still matter because it demoralizes my machine. People aren't going to trust what's real. Okay, buddy, let's see how this works. Meow, 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 meow. So you saw in a lot of these uh, viewers aren't going to be able to see prior to them coming out some of the schematics that I had that I showed you in my black, black book. Yeah. You know, are, are you are you going to be kind of excited or curious about, about some of that stuff? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I don't know if you want me to say what you got going, but... No, definitely be be my guest, man. You give me that opportunity. Uh, definitely some good ideas for sure. This could really change the game. Game, 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 game. Uh, as far as machine wise, you know, having something that's more less pieces, you know, less moving objects, tighter. Yeah, yeah. Because on. as an artist, you know that that's our objective is kind of. Like, let's say we picked up a machine that had five different welded parts and screwed together, opposed to this one single block of 1018 steel or iron that was one piece. Yeah. Do you look at stuff like that? Yeah, I do. I mean, I notice when, when I buy a machine, I try and see what it's all about, you know, kind of study it. You pick it up, feel it. Yeah, see the weight, you know, weight's a big thing too. You don't want something too heavy. You know, because you're going to be there for hours all day long. Your arms are going to get tired and shit. Definitely. So that's a big thing. Weight, you know, moving parts. Just like anything else, the more moving parts there are, the more liable it is to break or not be a solid functioning thing. Right, and then we get down into the geometry of it and the physics. And the physics aspect of one piece opposed to many pieces is... The vibration and oscillation from that machine, it not only into your hand, because that could be a lot of the machines that goes into your hand and then it tires you out a lot quicker. Not only that, at the tip of that needle and into the skin, micro millimeters of adjustments on these machines will have a major impact in the skin. And, um, you know, a lot of the artists out there, they just don't know that. They just want a machine. They don't have time. Once they have a client database, they don't have time to mess with the machines. They have to have it work for them right there. Let's say your power supply took a shit right now. Would you be pissed? Yeah. <laughs> because that is the lifeline and bloodline of what he's doing. And not only does is the client sitting here enduring some pain. This guy's tolerance is pretty high, but let's say a young 
18 year old girl that's a, you know plays soccer you know she's not gonna feel the pain that he has as a ranger uh, emotionally physically and uh, everything else so you have to take into consideration the tolerance to pain and the time the window that you have to get that kicked out sometimes people tap out so quick and early because and guess what happens their mind tells their body can't do this no more what happens mind the ink starts matter. pushing it out so, so I gotta th like, mind like, over that, like the one girl in there earlier she was all screaming screaming like huh calf tattoo. And it, I can't stand that to me <laughs> is if you're gonna go get a tattoo does it hurt Everybody asks you, does it hurt? Uh, no, I not at all. I think it feels kind of good. Not at all, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> it's pure, man. The pain is it's a pure feeling. Like, you don't, you can't experience that shit anywhere else. That shit's real, you know what I mean? Like, See, oh. to me, and it's a release of energy for me. I like it. Yeah, yeah I like that's it what I'm There's certain parts of my body I would probably not want to do. <laughs> yeah. That I felt like uh, parts of my stomach, I don't like that. Because my stomach likes to twitch. When the needle touches the stomach, my, my stomach starts twitching because I'm ticklish. Yeah. So the artist can't, and I'm getting chunky at my old age, I can't, uh, they can't grab it and then it's just more of a problem for the artist and then what does he do? He just goes to digging, you know? <laughs> and it doesn't feel very good. But, I've heard stomachs are the worst spots. Well, we did this one with a single needle on my stomach. Oh, nice. Yeah, single needle, dude. The whole thing filled in and just to give her credit, though, I think my calf tattoo hurt the worst out of all of them. Yeah, there's different parts of the body, you know. Uh, I I don't I don't like a a piece done on my uh, on the ins the, the ankle part. I don't like the ankle yeah. at all because all the blood all the flows there. All those tendons in there too, like. Yeah, I just did a, a hand tat a couple of days ago, and I didn't really like it much. I don't know if I'm gonna accept those or not. I just didn't like. I couldn't. You know, it took a lot longer than I thought it would would because I had to work over, you know, 25 bones in the hand plus some tendons and stretch out the veins and shit just, it got annoying to me. It was a nuisance on top of the hand, you know, so. Hands are hard, man. You got to really focus because you go in just too, a little too deep, man, and it's all ruined. Just well, blown. Everywhere. That just blows out, I think, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's not a lot of skin. You know, like, yeah. you're on his shoulder, dude. You can almost, you can bottom out on yeah. his shoulder and it's not really going to do shit. Right. You know what I mean? Now, did you ever learn depth and, uh, you know, how far do I go into the, how many bolts do I use, you know, stuff like that? Or did you just pick up and go from experience? Kind of gave me the pointers that I needed to really get started, you know, and then after that, you kind of just go on experience, you know? Uh-huh. So, I mean, first, someone, someone just has to give you the knowledge and then kind of do what you want with it from there, you know? And that's, isn't that the best feeling once you get that knowledge and take off with it with your, with your own? Yeah, for sure, when you can put together your own system. And your own style of, incorporated within your, your piece. Thing, you know right. I, mean? I was apprenticing and then working a job late at night so that I could still pay the bills. You know what I mean? So. Right, because you don't get paid during an apprenticeship. No, fuck no. So... You're, you're just proving to them that you want to be there. So, I mean, if, if you really want to do it, then you'll last, you know. But you just can't give up, you know. You're Class, already, probably, he's, probably like five, six different shops before I came here. And he's saying, just don't up. give up, guys. You know what I mean? I, I know that some of you guys out there are talking suicidal thoughts because of this business. A lot of people don't even understand that concept. I don't know if that's drug usage or just bad, bad family life. This is all you got. But listen up. Definitely keep going with it. First and foremost, get the right tools. We've stressed this enough. You cannot do to pick up a Chinese machine and push out work with it if you had to. But when you're first starting, there's no way you're going to pick up a Chinese machine and kick out something like this. It's not going to happen. Not only that, you need to understand that you need to do your research on the human anatomy. You have to, uh, you have to know what pigments, what inks. And these are the secrets of the industry. Um, some guys are okay with giving that information, and some aren't with that apprenticeship. You know, like uh, I've my boy Javier, magazines all over the place in LA, and uh, that's the shop going to be opening up in San Jose. Guess what? He sticks to one ink for about you know 12, 15 years, and that's what he does. He won't change it up. Now, 
Do I agree with that? I don't know. I'm different. I like to try new things. He may not. He may be in that zone where he doesn't want to top out and see his full potential. I do. So, me getting the gist of him and his personality type, he likes to experiment with new things as well. That means he's not topped out. You know what I mean? He's a humble... I mean, I get set on certain things. Like, I like certain types of ink and shit, but I'm not against trying new shit. Now, now why would that be? Let me... Like, being against trying new shit? No, no, no. Why, why would you uh, be set, let's say, on an ink? This is a good topic. Um, just because I've used it and I know that it's, you know, the colors are good, it lasts. Just, just those little things, you know? Like, sometimes, too, it's just comfortability. Like, you, you get set on your ways, you know? And you're afraid to change, so sometimes... Because you don't want to make that mistake of changing and have to revert back to the original. Yeah, because then who's going to pay the price for that, you know? Yeah, your name. So, Basically, you know. You know. kind of get stuck on certain things. But, I mean, also it's just trial and error, too. Trial and error, guys. You know what I mean? Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, trial and error. Word of mouth. But, you know, word of mouth the problem is it might not work for you. That works for someone with, you know, 25, 30 years of experience. Hopefully more trials and errors. Oh. <laughs> well, we all hope that. Okay. Definitely, right? Even in the military, don't we? Yeah. And and what you based what you just touched upon was was a crucial point. You said, you know what? I trust it. It's like us in the military. We go to the gas chamber, and why is that? Because we have to build confidence in the equipment that we're using. Yeah, the, gas the gas mask. We have to trust our mask. So they send us in. Depends though what kind of training. It's but them though, and then they just make you take it off and run around. And do push ups and say yeah. you're social and talk, and you have to get a good whiff of it. You can't, uh, you know, it's not good. I mean, just a good whiff. It's like a good 10 minutes of yeah. hell. Hell. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> it ain't no fun if the no. chemicals taking Honestly, freaking off. I'd rather get blown up again than freaking sit in the gas chamber. Yeah, the, the, uh, the NBC drills are no fun, man. I don't like, I like to have my all breath. The NBC gear going out. I can't imagine oh, the first Desert Storm, they all went in wearing full mop gear. Dude, I was like, mop level I was like, four and got my sniper like, kit. Like, for real? Yeah. I guess it's like it's like 130 <laughs> degrees and they're mop four because they're scared of biological yep. weapons. And they, it's just like, that adds like 40 degrees to the heat index. Like, first time I wore that, dude, I puked inside my. my you know my mask yeah. and it came right back in my mouth it was like we do drills with it in georgia and it was so hot and then by the time you're done you pull your mask up you literally just dump water out of it because you just sweat so much oh yeah yeah definitely because you have the uh neo i think it's what neoprene rubber gloves on the outside and then you have cotton ones on the inside yeah. so you know you're I was falling out left and right. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, Sergeant, I'm drinking water. He's like, no, plus cool you, Plus, I got, you know, I got my aid bag on. I got, like, you know, yeah, my, my M4, like, all your gear. Like, even without mop gear, your gear, wearing everything, all your armor and everything, you probably... With that, do you miss the uh, structure like I do? Um, not really. I just... I don't like being told what Stop I have you. to do 24-7, like, having to... The worst part of being a ranger was just, like, like certain times of the month, like, you were on call, so you couldn't do what you wanted to do. Yeah, you couldn't make those plans. Because it was like, you had to be ready to go within, like, 20 minutes as they called you. Yep, definitely on alert standby all the time. That's yeah. why I got out right there. I have a family now, and I can't I can't go to a special mission in freaking Brazil because they want me to. And, it's like, cool, it's fun, dude, if you don't have a, a family or... or you know, because Mr. Or when you're Sun, sitting through Mr. briefings Goddard. talking about how if North Korea invades South Korea, everybody in Korea will die. Then we send you in and probably 80% of you are going to die. And you're like, um... Not a good idea. <laughs> I was always it's good with it. I said, Thank you know God we didn't go to North Korea. When I, they were talking about it, though, for a while. Yeah, they were. A lot of friends scared, still like, talking about it. I was, I was pretty scared, dude. I didn't want to go. See, me, I, at the time... I just had been through a divorce. I didn't care. I said, you know what? Take me. Yeah. My grandma fought in North Korea, so it's kind of like, that would have been cool. But Ain't no joke over there. But man. they told us literally 80% of us would die. Oh, yeah. We went in. And we were like. So have it. That, I mean, that in itself is just like. Any special techniques that you're doing right here to, what would you give advice for these guys? Let's say they, they want to pack, right? Um, now, staying in one spot, we all know, and they should know at this point that you stay in one spot, you're just going to dig a hole. Now, 
do you use a special technique or angle that you like or for packing yeah like the solid fill that you're pretty much doing now uh, you I just wanna like, you always wanna keep that like 45 degree angle, you know what I mean? You hear that guys? <laughs> but, a lot of times like, I'll, I'll like, I'll be working on one spot and you'll see like after a while it only takes so much ink, you know what I mean? So sometimes I'll do like one, I'll do one layer and if it's not all the way black I'll leave it and then come back to it. And we've brushed up against that guys. What he's doing is he's building up, he's letting the skin cool off and coming back to it. Because if you keep going and try to push it, it's not gonna work. You're just gonna rip it up. You're gonna have excessive scabbing. Your your pigment's gonna fall out. Uh, you know, that's what he's getting at right now. And yeah, you don't wanna overwork it, you know? And that's the worst part that these guys are having trouble with. Um, is if there was a question database here opposed you know with this DVD set they would ask well how do I get that white in there how do I pack it so solid that you know what I'm saying it's all about consistency like the least amount of strokes it takes to do what you're trying to do is the best way to put it you know what I mean absolutely now rotaries I couldn't really brush up because I haven't used rotaries too much and look, look at his work though this is a rotary, guys, and this is a dragonfly. Now, look how solid that is. Look how great, you know, how how perfect this is, and there's no swelling. You know what I mean? A little bit of redness. We've uh, we've got a really uh, light pigmented individual, and that's another good point. How is it different from really white skin, melanins, melatonin, as opposed to a darker guy, real dark? Um, pigments don't come out, you know, on like darker people, really. Like, even black and gray is hard to really tell your shades, you know? And then you Especially have to really get it in there. The skin, right. right, and you know why that is, is because less melanins in the skin, they scar really easily and really quickly. So with the darker individual guys, you have to get in there, know what you're doing, and get out. You cannot stick, like a guy like me with fair complexed skin, you could work on me, like you said, let it cool off and come back. You, you can't really do that with a darker individual on that level. They have some skin pigment. It's or pigment. Uh, it's all about skin pigment and uh, the melanins in the skin, melatonins. So, uh, that's a good science of it. There yeah. is definitely a difference there. Um, you will not be able to see a blue or not, barely a green in a really dark African. Opposed to a white, white person. You know what I mean? A black dude versus a white girl. There's gonna be tall, I mean real white, like milky white. Those are the best colors that you'll ever produce on somebody because of no conflict within the melatonin. So I get my tattoos done on the, not in the summertime. Yeah, a lot of people don't do that too. And what's that? A lot of people won't come get tattooed that's not in, in the winter time. You know, a lot of I people come in the winter time because I know if I'm tan, it'll be, it it's not gonna be as good. That's good to know. So. You know that if you have a tan, the artwork's not going to be as good as if you would come in broad winter. That's yeah. excellent to know right there. Excellent. Yeah, and a lot of people don't do it like that. Like, they don't get tattooed in the winter. A lot of people come in in the summer, they're like, why are you doing I'll that? say, why? Because then you can't go swimming. Nathan! You can't well, you turn on yeah. my, my, uh, my computer? I think it died, man. You know what I think about that is, too? In the summertime, statistically, that's when most fights, cops are dealing with fights. Yeah. Cops are dealing with all that stuff, right? So who wants to have pain and a cold? You're not going to see a, a fight in snow yeah. more than you would in yeah. broad summer where you're just drinking a 40. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's yeah. the difference. Drinking a 40. Drinking a 40 out of the pouch. <laughs> Slamming bone. That was beautiful. So I'm going to cut here real quick. Take me a little smoke. This guy's awesome, man. We'll be yeah. following it and try to finish product here. Thank you, client, for uh, Ranger, Ranger yeah. Man. Yeah, thanks.
join and drive Better yet, I could walk to a better time Hit trees while I'm busy on the grind And they wanna hit these cause they keep them really high Bitch please, I could roll a joint and drive Better yet, I could roll three up at a time Hit trees while I'm busy on the grind And they wanna hit these cause they keep them really high It could be nothing but it might be something like a old pair of shoes The way your boy run it Hungry like I'm hunting go dummy Why you stunting? I be smiling while you frontin' I be wildin' while you clubbing Clue cue the track Put it out, it's misery You know she a liar and she say she ain't feeling me I'm the truth, this track is the serum Other cats keep yelling but we still can't hear them Need to soak a little money in your crap, man Less on the gear, a little more on the slaps, man Big headed rappers just a target to aim at My bar's all gold like the brim on the ace hat Dive bar rock stars fall by the wayside Problem is they only make music that daylight I make heat rocks, you can come get these Look like a rock star, smoke like a hippie Bitch, please, I can roll a joint and drive Better yet, I can roll to a better time Hit trees while I'm busy on the grind I'm busy.